Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. We have a little bit of misty morning, and that is it. Clean, refreshing, really good in the morning. Anyways, I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. We're talking about T-Mobile and SpaceX, Starlink, combining forces. Very interesting, very interesting. Um, I'm going to leave this to a short video, all right? Some people have been saying, wow, your videos are getting longer and longer. I apologize for that. Whenever I do something that's really technical, I have to dive in a little bit deeper because for me, I don't like to just tell you how to do something, but also the why. So this way you actually learn something instead of just doing exactly what I say, which basically means nothing. So anyways, today we're just going to jump right into this. I think this is very, very interesting, like I said, and I think hopefully you do too. It is something that is moving things forward for SpaceX, where a lot of these cell phone, a lot of these telco providers out there are saying, you know what? We need to either join forces with these people or we're going to get run over. And that's why a lot of these telcos have been putting like the kibosh on everything that Elon Musk has been doing. These attorneys for these telcos just find ways to slow down or hinder in some way this forward motion that has been going on with SpaceX for the last year, year and a half with Starlink. And all of the things that are happening now, moving from version one satellites to version 1.5s, and now the version twos that will be coming out that are going to be incredible. Anyways, I was reading an article about this over on, let me see, was it Space Explored? And it was written by Derek Weiss. And I'm going to read some of this article to you. And then I want to give you my commentary on it and then hopefully get your thoughts about this also. Before we get into this, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my ebooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, please consider throwing this video a thumbs up if you liked it, enjoyed it, found it entertaining, anything, maybe educational or maybe edutational. Edutational? Edutainment. Yeah, something like that. Also, if you haven't subscribed as of yet, please do so and click this little bell icon over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And, and if you just want to say thank you, a lot of people have been asking me about this. YouTube has given us a method now. Just click down here, the little thank you button, or even better, become a member of the channel. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into this. So this article starts out by saying T-Mobile and Starlink announced coverage above and beyond a direct Starlink connection to existing phones that will bring cellular connectivity anywhere in the world, regardless of how close you are to any cell tower. This is quite impressive. And this is one of the things that Elon has been talking about for a long time getting satellite service into rural areas or areas that didn't have high-speed internet access in the past. Now we're looking at getting cell connection in areas that has never had cell connection before. There is no towers by using these brand new version two Starlink satellites. We'll get into that in just a second. Yesterday, the big presentation or the announcement between the CEO of T-Mobile and of course, Elon Musk, happened. And that's what this article is all about. Speaking about this presentation that went on, SpaceX started the presentation by highlighting the needs for communication as quote, nearly 20% of the U.S. is unreachable by traditional wireless networks. Starlink's main terminals bringing high-speed internet access to those locations, but are large, expensive, and require a clear line of sight to the whole sky. That's incorrect. They really require a clear line of sight to the north, northeast, and northwest. That's if you're in the northern hemisphere and exact opposite if you're in the southern hemisphere. So he gets it a little bit wrong in here, but that's okay. We give him a pass. With the latest move, T-Mobile aims to totally eliminate mobile dead zones by integrating their existing mid-band PCS spectrum into Starlink's V2 version 2 satellites launching as soon as next year. 
This will allow phones to connect directly to satellites without any changes needed to those phones. This will allow MMS as well as SMS text messages and eventually voice and small amounts of data anywhere in the world. T-Mobile also announced that it plans to include this service as a standard plan for no additional or increased cost. That's really nice. I like that. The speeds and connectivity are far more limited than a full-size terminal or standard 4G or 5G connectivity. There will just be two to four megabits of bandwidth per cellular zone. That's a little bit. While this is very slow, this partnership will provide life-saving connectivity when needed. Of course, to connect to such small antennas on the ground, large and powerful antennas are needed in space. This will come with the second generation Starlink satellites, which are set to launch on SpaceX's Starship rocket. We talked about this in the previous video, but there is some things going on with possibly launching this into space using Falcon 9s because they are making them a little bit smaller so they can fit in the Falcon 9 upper fairing. So we'll get into that also before the end of this video. These new antennas for T-Mobile Spectrum will be in addition to the KU as well as KA band antennas for SpaceX's Starlink terminals and the laser links that allow high-speed communication between the satellites. Folding out from the main body from the much larger version 2 Starlink satellite, the cellular antennas will be roughly, quote, 25 square meters, that is massive guys, 25 square meters. Musk also clarified that the version two Starlink satellites will not launch on Falcon 9, but there could be an interim satellite that could fit into the rocket's smaller fairing if Starship is delayed more than expected. This is what I was telling you about just a moment ago. They're looking at retrofitting, let's say the Falcon 9s to be able to house smaller versions of the version two Starlink satellites. And instead of in a vertical position, they're gonna put them horizontal or vice versa. Anyways, they're gonna crunch them in there. So instead of launching 52 or 55 SpaceX Starlink satellites that are like version 1.5s, these new version 2.0s that are slightly smaller, they'll be able to fit about 13, 12 or 13 in that fairing. So that is interesting. We'll see what happens, how many more delays happen for Elon when it comes to the Starship. Anyways, it continues. This won't go live for some time with the earliest connectivity expected in late 2023. While the partnership is between SpaceX and T-Mobile, the two companies share aspirational plans for, quote, reciprocal roaming where other carriers will share part of their spectrum for use on Starlink satellites. So as many people as possible have mobile satellite connectivity in as many locations as possible. T-Mobile also said in response to a press question that they are, quote, open to using Starlink for some of their data backhauling though it does not have any specific plans at the moment. Using Starlink for backhauling could help bring high-speed internet access into even more rural areas. That'd be good for us. While there was speculation about Apple bringing satellite connectivity to the iPhone ahead of the launch of the iPhone 13, and once again with the iPhone 14, with these satellites using existing bands, any additional hardware or software won't be necessary. Direct satellite connectivity will work with existing iPhone and Android devices. So this is really kind of cool, guys. This is cool because now we're seeing that we're gonna be able to get connectivity anywhere. And one of the things that they were showing over and over and over in the videos while this event was happening was people like on the farm, people way out in the middle of nowhere and all of these locations that really need some type of uplink. And years ago, you would end up with like a fifteen, twenty thousand dollar $20,000 like massive phone, a satellite phone to be able to get that uplink in case of an emergency. Well, with this service, you can use just the phone that you have in your pocket, which is amazing. But what I was reading also is that since the satellites are moving at like 17,000 miles per hour, there is going to be 
a lot of spottiness to it or outages. Or if you send a text, let's say, using this service, sometimes that text might not leave your phone for 30 minutes. It depends on where the satellites are. Now, as Elon grows the number of satellites that are in the air, right now we're right around, let's say, 3,000. As we get to 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 plus, that delay will become less and less and less, which is fantastic. And more satellites is what we're looking for anyways, because there's a lot of Starlink users like myself that have been around ever since the beginning and that saw how fast the network was in the beginning in comparison to now are kind of upset about it, let's just say. And they're leaving for 4G and 5G connectivity through T-Mobile or Verizon Home or whoever, instead of using SpaceX Starlink. Now, I'm personally sticking with Elon Musk stuff because I believe in him and I believe in the product. Once again, I'm not a fan boy, but I am a fan of his as well as what he's coming up with here. And I do believe, like I said at the beginning, these telcos are shivering in their boots, let's say. They're shaking because they know the writing is on the wall. When he has 20, 30, 40,000 satellites roaming around the planet, he is going to be the one and only internet provider. Let, obviously, that's not the case. As you see what the CEO from T-Mobile was talking about, we might use, in quote, we are open to using Starlink for backhauling our data because it just simply makes sense. Like I said, those version two satellites are gonna be like floating NOx or network operation centers. And instead of having fiber optic cable, they're gonna have fiber optic lasers. So everything is gonna be traveling from satellite to satellite, bouncing around the planet at the speed of light. It's just amazing to me, just absolutely amazing. Could you imagine what can be done with this? And when we see these people that are in these rural environments that have no internet access at all, that might have a health issue, or there might be some type of emergency or catastrophe or whatever, and be able to get an uplink like that from a phone and not like a $15,000 satellite phone, I mean, that is revolutionary. That's amazing. Once again, this is gonna start out with about two to four megabit in an entire cell zone, right? That's nothing, right? It's minuscule, but it doesn't matter. This is the beginnings. And like I said, as these things are whirling around the planet at 17,000 miles per hour, and our antenna that's sitting on the roof is trying to keep track of all of this, obviously this is going to be a little bit harder to do, and that's why we're gonna see that spottiness at the beginning. So I'm excited about this because it shows how SpaceX, Starlink is moving forward. And I am really glad that I've gotten into it on the ground floor and have been able to see it grow and hopefully see it continue to grow without being stymied or stifled by these telcos, which I know will not happen. Once again, the writing is on the wall, they know what's happening and they're trying to slow it down as much as possible. Are they going to be able to stop the massive train from rolling through? No, but they're gonna try to slow it down to give them more time to figure out what they're going to do. What is their next move? Just like I said about satellite TV, these people are dead in the water. They're finished. Everything will be going IPTV and the majority of the people are gonna be using things like Starlink, okay? That's it, period. You could just forget about Dish Network and DirecTV and all the rest of this stuff and Viasat and all the rest of these companies that are offering internet at these horribly slow speeds because they're using geocentric satellites that are sitting at thousand plus kilometers away in comparison to 500. It's a big, 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 big issue for these people. And we're gonna see this play out more in the news. And I'm excited about it. And I'll be reporting back to you guys. So anyways, what do you think about this? Is this kind of cool? Also, are you interested in that Tesla Pi phone? I am, I am. I'm gonna to talk to you about that in another video. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, throw the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, family, colleagues, wherever, if you want to please subscribe to the channel and click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Also, if you want more Starlink coverage, 
I have about 70 plus videos. Go check out my Starlink playlist. There's a ton over there. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented over the many years for you and me. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Have a great weekend.